is your RV going to look like this in about 20 years? Due to the fine construction techniques used, let's take a look at an alternative, renovating an ambulance. And welcome back to Tip of the Week, Converting Your Ambulance into an RV. This will be an update of what we've done since the last update to give you an idea of where we're at. It is still a work in pro progress, but we've made a lot of headway. we got more to go. It is still very cold and snowy outside, so we use these days to keep at this and getting it moving forward. So let's take a look at the highlights. So coming up the back steps, we notice a wall in front of us. We'll talk about that later. And then off to the left is our kitchen area. And notice the butcher block countertop I have installed. Now, I'm brand new to butcher block, and wow, was that heavy. And um, But I'll tell you what, at least I have a wonderful workbench. It is very solid. It is sitting on top of a very sturdy structure that was there before so this lended itself to a very robust countertop and then the sink over here which is now all plumbed in I have not uh, added water or tested for leaks yet or anything and then above the wall we have some GFI outlets and this is our main corridor for electrical wires that go up from down below and we'll take a look at that a little bit later and then up in this area here we have our switch box where we control a lot of the lights and this has been powered up and is operational and right around the corner and just to the left of the entrance into the cab we have the shower area now this is a shower area where the faucets have been plumbed and the shower head and hose will connect to the fitting down there but the idea is not to create a separate room for the shower but rather when it's time to shower we'll remove this base and underneath the base is a shower shower base the drain that goes to our gray tank and then you simply attach the shower head and hose and then a curtain to wrap around you and that way we don't need a separate room for showering we just set up a few items and get the curtain ready and that way the showers almost always almost ready and you might even notice do we have an electrical box with our switches next to our shower with the water and plumbing? And the answer is yes. But not to worry, that's all 12 volts, so you'll get just a trickle, I mean a tickle from a trickle of charge if that were ever the case, but that will certainly be no problem. We're not finished um, in, uh, setting up the panels or separation between those two at this time. And the blue tape here signifies where the cabinets will go over the kitchen countertop. Now on the other side of that bathroom wall is our heater. And this is one of those radiant heaters where there is no flame, but it runs on propane. And it uses a catalytic element and glows red hot and radiates. It's a very small one, that's, but it's perfectly sized for this interior. And we've yet to plumb that with a hose over to the propane tank, which we will look at a little bit later. And I keep the butcher block covered up with cardboard for our workbench. As we move left, of course we have the custom window we installed and then down here you will recognize an air conditioner now, the air conditioner is a very small one I believe it's 4000 BTU and that's installed 
one of the uh, cabinets accessible from the outside but that'll do very nicely at this location at which point eventually we will be building our bed and seating area. There's a lot of junk right now in here. Oh and not that it's very exciting but up in the ceiling this took me days I carefully installed inch and a half pink foam board insulation foam board pink panther foam board underneath the foil there so what's nice about this is we have some uh, R7 insulation and then with the pink foil and then the air gap between the foil and where the ceiling is going to go we have some uh, very nice radiant barrier it's important to leave that gap between the foil and your next surface so you don't get any conduction uh, so we're all prepared for the hot weather the best we can given our constraints now let's look behind door number one and this is the first compartment probably I think they had an oxygen bottle in here a very tall narrow one notice I installed the water inlet this is for hooking up to water when you go to a campsite and let's go ahead and open the door all right stepping back here the top section is a 35 gallon water tank and then underneath is where all the magic happens it's a little dark in there let's see if we can get some light that light should help a little bit all the way in the back through all that mess is our pump that's an on-demand water pump used in all the RVs and then this tank here is our expansion tank and that will smooth out the pulsing uh, rapidity of the water pressure as they pump not required but it's nice and then all the rest of these we've got some check valves and some T's and whatnot the idea of all of this is that we can fill the tank through our water supply in the door and turn a valve and then instead of filling the tank use the water pressure from the campground to supply the water for the camper so that's why it looks like a little bit complicated it's not really just a circuit with some check valves and other valves so that we have dual purpose either filling the tank or using the tank for water or using the campground hookup for water and then also we have a valve for winterization so that we can draw in antifreeze instead of water and antifreeze the uh, system down here below is our waste area our standard RV hookup down here that's for both our black water which is coming from the toilet over on the left and then way at the back you see a hose that's from our gray water so we have two valves the second valve is hidden back there so both dumping is done through this one connection for both gray water and black water now our black water of course is in the tank below the toilet that we looked at previously so that just comes to this point let's go look at where the gray water tank was placed and that'll be for the shower and the sink in the kitchen now we're at the other side of the ambulance and down here in this lower drawer is our gray water tank and it's put it's on its side but all of the magic happens right up here the hose up at the top of the screen the very top is from the shower and the kitchen sink and the hose at the bottom which is going into a pump is what pumps the gray water over to the other side of the ambulance when we pull the valve and it ejects all of the gray water because we wanted the gray water and black water to exit out of the same opening but our gray water tank was on the other side of the vehicle up above 
is our propane tank and underneath the sink. There's the drain and the supply hoses. Now, right above is this compartment here. Let's take a look in here. This is my favorite spot. Inside here is our electrical works. As a big overview, basically we have one lithium battery. We will have three when we're done. We're just uh, starting out with one so that we can work in here. Then we have the famous Victron Energy MultiPlus. What this thing does is convert our battery power to 120 volts and also simultaneously through the magic of a transfer switch, not actually simultaneously, but automatically switches and charges the batteries um, when we're plugged into shore power. And that all happens automatically in here. And up here is just the layout for all the 12 volt connections. Over here is the 120 volt breaker box for the four circuits that are um, inside the ambulance. And then we have some smaller box. Let me get you a different angle here. Here's our, this is the uh, DC to DC converter. This takes whatever the alternator puts out and provides the proper voltage for charging the lithium batteries, which is 14.4 and then the profile for charging the lithium properly. And that will do up to uh, 40 amps. Uh, another reason for this is that if the lithium batteries were near empty, normally you, you would burn out your alternator because lithiums will take all the power you can throw at them, so this limits it to 40 amps, so very critical when charging lithium batteries from an alternator. Down here is our solar controller. Now we will have about 600 watts of solar panels coming soon up on the roof. And this takes that voltage, which will be about 120 volts at about, uh, not 120 volts, uh, 3 times 20, 60 volts at about 10 amps, give or take, depending on the sun. And that will also charge the battery. So the bank of batteries, so that will be 300 amp hours of batteries, will be charged either through the sun, through the alternator, or through shore power when you're plugged in. And, of course, all of that battery will be used to supply either the 12 volts or the 120 volts that the ambulance needs to live out in the middle of nowhere without any connection. So lots of fun wiring this up and a lot of state-of-the-art uh, technology there. And the, the batteries can be monitored uh, right from the, uh, the Bluetooth. I can monitor on the phone and see how much uh, amperage is left, how much time is left, etc, etc. And we have also installed floodlights at each side of the box. These of course are LED low power consumption. A little hard to see here through the glass up here but on the roof, we have installed our fan vent, which raises and lowers. And right behind that is the TV antenna, rotatable. And all the way at the end, just past the TV, is our wires for the solar panels coming up shortly. So that produces a way to get the wires in without any leaks. And that funny looking thing is the old antenna used by the police and that will be removed. And the solar panels will go back here and they should be showing up soon. And there you have it. That's our update for this week. So stay tuned. We'll keep making progress. It's nice having most of the electrical and plumbing sort of mapped out. We got to start working on the interior, such as where the bed goes and the benches and the walls and the ceilings and the floors and, and things like that. But I think we're over a major hurdle with some of the mechanical aspects done. And now we got to start thinking about fit and finish 
and how things are going to be laid out. No wrong answers here. Very uh, personal, customizable direction you take with something like this. So we'll see you next time. Back to building.